this is my open letter to Cards Esports. Now, before I get into the central point of my letter, I want to briefly sketch a history of Cards Esports. Now, I've been around since the first prized cards tournament, and I've played in most of the ones since then. So this is going to be a brief rundown of all of the different tournaments and formats that have been tried out by 1939 in any official capacity. So starting with the tournaments that were run and have since been discontinued, we have the Cards Open, which began in mid-2020, shortly after the introduction of the Cards OCC, and the Cards Open was a staple of the competitive cycle. In particular, what made the Cards Open stand out was the fact that it was exactly what it described itself as. It was an Open. Anybody could participate regardless of collection size, regardless of rank, and importantly, it was only a couple hours on the weekend, so people who didn't have the time to grind ladder throughout the entire month to make it into the OCC could play in the Cards Open. Now, unfortunately, the Cards Opens were discontinued shortly after the introduction of the OCC Ultimate, and the price pool associated with the Open was moved towards the OCC. So this meant a restricting of the overall esports prize pool within cards to a narrower margin of players within the OCC. Now, the next major tournament that has been discontinued is the aforementioned OCC Ultimate. It was brought in in May 2023, and it was intended to be the future of cards esports, with four OCC Ultimates throughout the year to really show the best players in the game and reward them accordingly. Now, there only ended up being three OCC Ultimates, and after that, it was scrapped. However, the prize pool from the Opens were not brought back to the Opens. The Opens have not been brought back, and rather, the prize pools were pushed onto the OCCs. Now, there have also been a wide range of miscellaneous tournaments, some invitationals to specific players well-known among the community. There's been some tournaments with alternative rules that are open to a wider range of players, some geared specifically at newer players, getting them interested in competing within tournaments. All of these have been discontinued. Now, let's go over the tournaments that are still continuing. There is the World Championship, of course, since 2019. This was the first tournament, and it is still going strong. But again, this is once a year. And then there is the OCC Clash, which was brought in in mid-2020 and has been the flagship of cards tournaments ever since then. There has been an OCC every single month since June 2020. Now, what this OCC looks like has changed quite a bit. So, in the beginning, it was just the top eight players from ladder would play in the top eight of the OCC. It was very straightforward. You got ranks one to eight on ladder with seeds one to eight in the tournament, and you played. They pretty quickly changed this in September 2020 to top four would qualify immediately in, and the remaining eight players from ranks five to 12 would play against each other, and the four winning players would move on into the top eight. So very quickly, they introduced some amount of additional players, widening the range of players who could qualify in from ladder. Then in May 2021, they changed this to top four, and then the next 32 players would fight for four remaining spots rather than 12 players. This lasted just one month, and they changed it to top six on ladder, and then the remaining two spots would be filled by the winners of a qualifying bracket, including the other 32 players. And this is probably what most of you are familiar with. This is the longest lasting format for the OCC Clash, as it is now called. However, this was recently changed in December 2023 to just the top two on ladder, and the next top 32 will play for the remaining six spots. So as we can see, this is the most restrictive direct qualifying into the OCC. However, it is maintaining the ever-present 32 players fighting out for the next qualifying spots. This leaves us with community events. Where do community events fit into this? Because community events have been going on since the very beginning of cards. I've hosted some. There's some major ones that have become staples, such as the Nations Cup run by Spoos. And community events do appear to be important to 1939. They've referenced them several times in their various articles concerning esports, saying that they want to improve and promote community events. However, since saying these, there have been next to no community events. As far as I am aware, there has been the Nations Cup 3, and that's the only thing I can think of. I can't think of another major community event that has been hosted since this announcement. They should be happening, 1939 wants them to be happening, but they simply are not happening right now. So, what is the current state of esports? So, other than the World Championship, which again happens once a year, so it's not really worth talking about here, 
there was really just the OCC Clash, and this is taken directly from the Cards Esports website, explaining what the Clash currently is, which is a 34-player tournament. The top two on the in-game seasonal ladder are automatically qualified. The remaining 32 players face off for the remaining six spots. This qualification format has been changed from a double elimination bracket to a Swiss format, and all of their games are best of threes except for the finals. And what's important about this is they're previously the best of threes were except for the finals and third place match, except very recently in the last tournament, I believe, they have gotten rid of the third place match. So this is what we are currently left with in cards. So myself and a number of other players have quite a few concerns about the current state of Cards Esports and the current direction of Cards Esports. And when I say these are players' concerns from a wide range of players, I really do mean a wide range of players. I am talking about players who are tournament regulars in the past and have won thousands of dollars from Cards tournaments, and I'm talking about players who have been grinding in the OCC qualifiers and have never won a cent from a Cards tournament, and I am including players both from the English-speaking community and from the Chinese-speaking community. This is really players' concerns being voiced from all over the cards competitive community, and I've narrowed them down into some pretty broad points here that I'm now going to go over. So first up, and this is to me personally the biggest issue, is the problem of skewed rewards. Currently, there is $1,500 a month in the OCC Clash prize pool, and that gets paid out to just the top three positions. This is the entire prize pool for the OCC Ultimate split into the OCC Clashes. This is money that was intended to go to the eight players who performed the best over the three months, and it is now going to the best three players performing in a single tournament. This is also money that was previously taken from the open tournament prize pools, which again would go to players who could play through a variety of different scenarios and now it is entirely going to the top three players of a small tournament that you can qualify exclusively through ladder with. To me, this is very problematic. Why would I want to put in the hundreds of hours necessary every month to qualify for the top eight, which is now harder to qualify for than it previously was, and then even if I make it into the top eight, I have a five and eight chance of not getting any money. And even if I'm the best player in the world, you're playing best of threes. Best of threes, anything can happen. You just get a bad hand twice in a row, and you get nothing to show for your hundreds and hundreds of hours. Now, there is, of course, in-game rewards, but I don't need in-game rewards. Most players who are competing in these tournaments do not need in-game rewards. So, realistically, there's just a $1,500 prize pool that they're just not paying out equally. And this is causing huge issues because it's just not worth players' time anymore to compete in these events. And this is why you have seen so many huge name players, the players who are considered the best of the best, take a step back from the game or completely stop playing in tournaments altogether. Now, I personally have been taking a break because of these reasons. I know Tang Tang, arguably the top Chinese player, has just stopped playing in tournaments because it's just not worth his time anymore. So this is a very, very big issue. Next up, there's a big complaint about the lack of variety. And this is specifically in terms of the lack of variety in ways of qualification. It's just grinding ladder every single month. And on ladder, because you are playing against such a huge range of players, the available decks that you have to pick are very, very slim. It has to be very specific types of decks that can play games quickly because you have to play a lot of games and decks that are able to beat the wide range of things you see on ladder, which tend towards much greedier, slower control combo decks, meaning that you really can only play aggro. Ladder is just aggro, and there's only so many aggro decks that are good at any given time, which means qualifying to an OCC just becomes playing the same aggro deck for hundreds and hundreds of games a month, every single month, for a shot at the prize pool, because even getting top eight even winning or getting second in the season is not enough to guarantee you any amount of money. The next issue is ladder problems, and this goes beyond the fact that ladder is very, very stale and can be frustrating for players who need to play it every single month to qualify, but ladder also has very, very serious issues with just the way that it works. So to begin with, there's some simple things such as on ladder, you can have two players who have the exact same points, 
and the game will decide one of them being ranked higher than the other and this can become very important in terms of seeding and in terms of qualification spots now the developers have said that this is an actual tie-breaking method this is not random and it will change based on this tie-breaking method but what the tie-breaking method is nobody knows they have not told us and really it just becomes a further frustrating aspect to play on ladder but also importantly ladder is very 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 easy to abuse and we have seen this before, and it has gone unpunished. On ladder, you can very easily queue into a friend of yours, and then have the friend surrender the game, and you will gain points. Now, as long as you don't immediately surrender the game, you're not going to set off any red flags. And this makes it incredibly easy to cheat, and incredibly hard to detect. And at the end of the day, the qualification on ladder is just how many points you can get, and the fact that you can get points for free without being caught is a huge problem for competitive integrity. Simply put, you cannot trust the results on Ladder to be a reflection of fair play. And also just Ladder is not a reflection of skill either. Ladder is a reflection of who has the most time to put into the game and who is best at a handful of very specific types of decks. So really just Ladder overall is hugely problematic for the tournament and a lot of players are just very, very sick and tired of these issues that result from the fact that ladder plays such a crucial role in the tournament process and again this is the only tournament when you had opens it was one thing because people who didn't like ladder could just play in the opens but now that occ is all we have all of these issues that have to do with ladder are really just compounding on each other so the last point is lowered impact of skill and this touches both on the qualification process and the tournament itself. Inside the tournament, you already have quarterfinals and semifinals being best of threes, which are basically just coin tosses, regardless of how good a player is. It's very difficult for a 5% edge over another player, which is a massive difference to be able to show through a best of three. Whereas previous tournaments, such as the Opens, had best of fives throughout the entire top 16. OCCs get best of threes until the final match, and you used to get best of fives in the third place match, but now there is no third place match, and simply if you lose in the semifinals, you tie for fourth, and in the qualification process, again, by getting rid of these other tournaments and not bringing them back, you are forcing everybody who wants to play cards competitive into this ladder-based qualification method, and you will have very talented players who do not have the time to play several hundred games a month on ladder. It's just simply a case of not the best players are going to be qualifying for these events because of the method that you have set up. And that's very frustrating for these players, and that's very frustrating for the other players, like myself. I want to be playing against the top players. I want to be playing against the other best players. And realistically, that's just not happening right now. And finally... Just all of these add up to the fact that it, the way it feels is that 1939 does not respect us competitive players or our time. And I come to this conclusion based off of the changes that they have done, changes that actively harm the player experience for players playing in the tournaments, as well as the fact that there is no dialogue between us and the developers. There's no dialogue on these changes. So, for example, when the OCC Ultimate was first announced, the money exclusively went to the top three of the OCC Ultimate. All of the OCC money from the three monthly tournaments all went to just the top three of the Ultimate. And that was absolutely insane. And everybody, every single competitive player had a problem with this. We all complained. And it was changed within a couple of weeks. And that just goes to show... If you had done any form of dialogue, if you had made a suggestion, if you had asked us our opinions, we could have caught this before it was officially announced. But there is no dialogue. Competitive players are very, very rarely listened to. And I understand that I have made a lot of suggestions. And I understand that I am just one player. So I'm not saying that, well, because every single one of my suggestions have not been taken up, that this is a sign that they don't listen to our suggestions. I'm not saying that they don't listen to them. I'm saying that they don't consider them to be on par with their own. They consider that our suggestions are just a part of general feedback that they get and can largely ignore because we are a minority of players. But despite that, we are a minority of players who
who represent the vast majority of players who play in tournaments. There are very few new players in any given tournament, so the vast majority of players in the, these tournaments are players who have been competing in several tournaments for several months, if not years, and these are players who can give feedback before changes are made. And quite simply, that is just not happening, and there has been several changes within the last year, year and a half, and it continues to show that they are not asking for our advice. So this is a continued process of not respecting our opinions and most importantly, not respecting our time. The fact that they are asking us to put in hundreds and hundreds of hours into their game and then competing on stream for them to create a end finished product that they can use to advertise their game. And the fact that they have money that they are investing into this but the fact that they aren't giving it out to the people who show up on stream, the people who have put in hundreds of hours. So yeah, simply put, players and their time are not being respected right now. So what is the solution to this? And this is really the crux of my letter here. I want to discuss different possible solutions and really hammer her down on one. So these are possible solutions that all will work to just improving the competitive esports experience for the players and just generally improve the mood and feeling of the players who put their time and effort into this game. Now, some of these are very small, some of these are very big, and some of these likely cannot work together. I'm not saying that all of these need to be implemented, but I'm just merely trying to highlight that there is a wide variety of possible solutions to improve the player experience, and these are solutions that have been suggested numerous times by numerous players for months, if not years. First off, change the payout to top eight. Now, I've, I've mentioned this before, and I'm not going to go into it too much again, but realistically, if you're asking players to put in hundreds of hours of time every single month, they deserve to get at least something for qualifying to the top eight. Now, the second thing is that they need to bring back the third place match. This one is just very simple. I have no idea why they got rid of this. If you want to lower stream time, you can cut a quarterfinal match. My best guess is that this was supposed to be the solution to pay out to more players. This way they can pay out to fourth place by making fourth place and third place equal. But again, that's not a really a solution. You could have just given fourth place a prize. And that doesn't even get to the fifth place, which is really the big issue. Like, if you're making people come to a tournament by putting in hundreds of hours to then do a best of three to decide whether or not you get nothing for your time and effort, that that's not fair. So... The third thing is bring back the opens. Now, I've mentioned this numerous times throughout this letter already, but just the opens are such a crucial part of the cards competitive ecosystem for a such a wide number of players. The open is the first tournament a lot of current competitive players got into because they saw it as more approachable than the OCC. And it's, of course, current active players who just simply do not have the time to qualify to the OCC, but would However, put in the time to play in an open, as well as it diversifies the prize pool. Right now, all of the esports prize pool goes into one tournament a month, having it go into two tournaments a month, or one tournament every month and a tournament every two months, or however you want to do it, just bring back the opens, and that will fix a lot of complaints that people have. Now, the fourth point is make best of fives where possible. Now, I understand that they don't really want to do best of fives throughout the entire tournament for an OCC, because they're trying to stream it all on one day. Now, the solution to this would be only stream one semifinal match and only stream one quarterfinal match and then have all of them be best of five. So rather than streaming two best of threes and then two best of threes and then a best of five and a best of five, stream four best of fives. Stream a quarterfinal match, stream a semifinals match, stream the third place match, stream the finals match. And to increase viewer engagement, have the viewers vote on which games they want to see rather than just arbitrarily picking them before the tournament, have them actually be decided in the moment by the people who have shown up to watch. See what the people want to see the most. And finally, they need to drastically improve the community event support system. So right now, it's both very difficult to find out where to get the resources to run your own event. It's not even known to most players, I think, that 1939 will support you by giving you in-game prize rewards to advertise with your event. But most importantly, they need to add tools in-game to make these tournaments feasible. There is a spectator tool that has existed in the game for several years, and it is not made public. Now, you can sometimes get access to this if you ask, but again, this is another hurdle because most people don't know that there's a spectator mode available to tournament organizers if they ask, 
and this requires you to ask and then go through the hoops of getting spectator mode set up on your account. Whereas if it was just in the client, it would be so much easier for people to run tournaments and tournaments would be able to be organized so much faster. You could just throw a tournament together, pick the first eight players and start spectating the games, throw up a stream. There you have it. But currently it's just so much effort and it's not worth the time for tournament organizers. It's not worth the time for players. But most importantly, and the point that I'm going to spend the rest of the letter focusing on, they need to rework OCC qualification. Now, as I mentioned in the history of Cards Esports, the OCC qualification process has gone through numerous different versions. And I'm not talking about changing the number of players pre-qualified and the number of players playing in the OCC qualifier. I'm saying that this needs to be reworked from the ground up. And specifically, it needs to be reworked so that ladder becomes less of a prominent position in the qualification process. And this will go miles to fixing all of these other issues that players have. So what is my grand solution for the rework of the OCC qualification system? Now, on the outset, I want to be very clear that one, this, what I'm about to suggest is not without faults. What I'm about to suggest is not the only solution. However, it is an idea that is much better than what we currently have. And it's an idea that could relatively easily be implemented if 1939 wants to. What I'm suggesting is the Officer Club League. Now, what this is, is a league of 20 to 30 players who play every month in a best of three round robin closed lists. And all of this will be organized by the players themselves. So the admins, they get the list of the players. They organize people into a discord where people can share their names and add each other. And then they give the pairings with dates. So every week, each player will be given a pairing of the four, five, six, seven players that they're going to play that week, depending on the size of the league. And then the players do the rest. They have a week to finish their game and report the scores. If they don't, then both players simply get a loss. And this league will be used to replace OCC qualifiers and act as the qualification method for the top eight. So at the end of the month, when the league finishes, the top eight players in the league will qualify to the OCC as seeds one through eight. Now, to keep new players being cycled in and out of this league format, you have the bottom eight players relegated out of the league, and then the top eight players from ladder put into the league for the following month. So this way, ladder still exists. There is a reason to climb ladder, but the reason to climb ladder is to get into this league, and once you are in the league, you no longer need to play ladder every single month to the top. Now, you can continue to play ladder if you want. It's a good place to get practice. It's a good idea to see what other people are playing. And of course, you might want to secure your spot should you be relegated. However, if you are inside the league, there is not a need to play on ladder. And importantly, as the results come in every single week, you can have the table of the scores for the leagues published on the cards website. So anybody can check the leaderboard standings at any time. And because all of this is down for the players to organize, you can have content creators such as myself, if they want to, if they're feeling like it, they can use this league format to create content. And all of this will help grow Cards Esports, which will lead into the main event of the OCC stream, which would just happen as normal, hopefully with changed spice rules, hopefully with third place match brought back. Now, what are the benefits of this Officers Club League format? I've named a few of them already. But one of the biggest ones is it allows for extended fan engagement. Right now, if you are the biggest fan of Cards Esports, you only check results three times a month. You check the results at the end of the month to see who is qualified. You check the results at the end of OCC qualifiers to see who else has qualified. And then you watch the stream. Throughout the entire rest of that time, there is nothing going on. And fans who want to follow Cards Esports simply have nothing to do. There's nothing to look at. And there's, there's just nothing. There is a void, an absence of content related to Cards Esports and related to the stream. With the, OCC, with the OCC League format, you'll have weekly updates, as well as players might choose to upload their footage or simply share their results, share screenshots. All of this will build excitement throughout the month for the OCC stream at the very end. Also, all players qualify through the same way. And this will allow for there to be tight qualifications that come down to the final games on the final weeks, rather than seeing a player who's just simply 300 points ahead of everyone else on ladder. Now, all of this fan engagement will lead to more fans tuning in to the end stream. 
all of this results in more viewers for the end stream. And viewers on the end stream is what the entire point of the Cards Esports is. Cards Esports is it meant to be an advertisement for the game. It is meant to encourage people to play the game. So the more people who watch the stream, the more people who engage with the stream, the more people who are excited for the stream, the better Cards Esports is doing from a purely business point of view, from 1939's point of view. So the current format is just not increasing fan engagement. I used to watch every single cards tournament back in 2020, back in 2021, but through 2022 and certainly in 2023, unless I am playing or casting the tournament, I usually just skim through the results and that's completely it. It is just simply not interesting to follow the tournaments in the current format. Now, another benefit of the OCC League format is it creates more narratives going into the OCC. Rather than seeing some names that you may or may not have heard before, uh, two players who have qualified in through getting a lot of points on ladder, but you don't know who they've matched into, versus six players who played in a very, very small Swiss format against 10 other players based on how many players actually show up to the qualifiers. It doesn't give you a lot to work with. Now, there's still some narratives you can have simply based on player history. Now, if this is a storied player who has played in previous tournaments, who has matched against their opponent several times before, you can create a narrative out of that. But if you have an OCC League format, you'll have players who might get relegated, but then return with a fury in the following months. You might have players who consistently place rank one in the League format, but then struggle to perform in the OCC. You might have players who consistently lose to other players in this OCC League, because this OCC League will just be a massive collection of competitive tournament records of competitive matches played between two of the best players in the game. So all of this can be used by casters and by the tournament admins. It can be used by the cards esports themselves to market the game, to improve the quality of the casting. And all of this, it goes back to improving fan engagement. If fans can follow narratives, if fans can follow specific players, they can follow specific rivalries, they will be more interested in the tournament and they will be more interested in watching the tournament. Now, the third point is the OCC League format rewards talented players and it rewards motivated players far more than the current system. So for talented players, if you have the talent to remain in the OCC League, whether you're getting into the top eight for the OCC or you are simply staying outside of relegation, if you're talented enough to stay within the OCC League, it means you don't have to put in the hundreds and hundreds of hours every single month that are otherwise currently necessary to qualify. This also means that if you have a player who is typically busy, but they are a very, very good player at the game, they can spend one month where they put in a lot of effort and they use a lot of their free time to qualify into the top eight to get into this OCC league. And then if they are good enough, they will stay there and they will not need to put in the time. And then you also have far more rewarding for motivated players. Now we see underdogs enter the OCC all the time. You'll have a player who just has a breakout performance and absolutely crushes one season whether it's due specifically to the meta or it's due to just favorable RNG in the final games of the month. Whatever it is, you have these players who are otherwise brand new names breaking it into the OCC. And these players show up, some do well, some don't, and then they are never seen again because it's so incredibly difficult for players to consistently get to the top of ladder because of the amount of time you have to put into it beyond anything else. And also, it's just incredibly unmotivating if you you break into the tournament, you get second on ladder, you make it into your first ever OCC, and then you lose in a best of three, you get no money, you go home after two games because you had two bad hands, and now you're expected to put in another several hundred hours into the game to try to get back into the same spot and risk the same thing happening again. If you are a motivated player who might not necessarily have the experience or necessarily even the skills yet, to consistently qualify for tournaments, this will allow you to be rewarded for your effort by putting into the OCC League. And even if you're relegated out of the first time you get into the league, that's going to give you so much experience. You're going to be playing tons of games, best of three tournament sets against the best players in the game at the moment. You'll get to see what decks they're playing. You'll get to see how they play. You can learn from your mistakes and improve. This is so much better for general player improvement for new players entering the competitive scene than the current system. The current system is so ludicrously punishing for new players, it's not even funny. Now, another benefit for this is that this replaces the monthly ladder qualifications. Now, I've mentioned this already, but monthly ladder qualifications are terrible. It also replaces OCC qualifiers, 
which are also notoriously terrible. Around half of the players who actually qualify for OCC qualifiers show up. Whereas if you have an OCC league, which replaces this, you are going to have the 20 or 30 most motivated players in the game currently who are going to be showing up. And if they don't show up, they get relegated, and then they're no longer in the league. And they have to get top 8. And if you're getting top 8, it means you're motivated. If you're playing in the league consistently, it means you're motivated. If you're getting to the top 8 OCCs, it means you're motivated. You won't have these empty tournament brackets anymore. Now, the fifth point is this allows for further experimentation within the competitive scene. So, players typically don't want to experiment when you, they have to play a best of three, or else they are immediately out with nothing. Now, if you are playing 19 best of threes, this gives you a ton of time to experiment and try out different lineups, and this is going to lead to much more innovation within the community. And innovation within the community leads to more players wanting to play the game and more players paying attention to the game. Because, as we have seen in very stale metas, if everybody's just playing the exact same deck every single tournament and every single ladder game, nobody wants to play the game. Tournaments is where these innovations come from, and when you give players who are going to be some of the best deck builders in the game the opportunity to experiment in a competitive situation, you are going to get results. Quite similarly to this, this is also going to create a much more interesting competitive meta. Because right now, the tournament meta is almost an exact reflection of the ladder meta, because the only way to make it into the tournament is by qualifying through ladder, which means that you are going to have hundreds of hours and ha have very, very refined ladder decks. So when it comes to picking decks for a tournament, where again, you have to play a best of three to get nothing, are you going to pick the games you have hundreds of hours on and are refined to the card, or are you going to pick a brand new deck? Simply put, you are going to pick the ladder deck. So this is going to create a competitive meta. This is going to lead to more interesting matchups. This is going to lead to more fan engagement to see the interesting matchups. You can have players actually show off their particular play style and their deck building style more in these formats. So all of this just works towards the Officer Club League just being a far superior format. And again, all of the numbers on the previous slide, the 20 players, the 30 players, the bottom eight being relegated, top eight from ladder coming in, all of that can be open for, to change. It doesn't need to be any of those specific numbers. That's just an idea. And that's the great thing about the league format is if the league's too big, you're feeling it's too bloated, a bunch of players aren't really playing their matches, you can shrink the league very, very easily. Now, of course, there is a number of potential issues with this system that I think are completely valid, and I have had this conversation about the OCC League, I've had this idea in my head for several years at this point, and I've had a number of conversations with very, very talented players who have had genuine concerns. So I'm going to list a series of these concerns, and I'm going to list my response to these concerns. So the first concern is that this is going to drastically increase the administrative effort needed to run the OCC League compared to previous tournaments, and all of this is going to cost 1939 more money because they have to pay the tournament organizers to spend more time on the game. However, I don't think that this would actually take any more time than the current system does. Because in the current system, you have to run the OCC qualifiers, and to get the OCC qualifiers, you need to send out the emails to all of the qualified players. You need to collect all of the qualified players into one location. You then need all of the qualified players to send in deck lists. You need to organize the deck lists and share the deck lists and then run the tournament where everybody plays. And then almost all of this is cut out with the league. Now with the league, you still need to get the players who have come into the league and gather them, but there's no deck lists because it's closed. The players organize themselves. There's no set time that needs to happen. Realistically, all the admins need to do after the initial wave of getting in the players who have qualified to the league is just making a table, handing out dates once a week, inputting the results once a week, and resolving the occasional dispute between two players. At the end of the day, I don't think that this will be any additional administrative time on behalf of 983 to run the league compared to the qualifiers. Now, the next concern that I've heard is that this will create very little player variety in the OCCs. So if you have the top players in the OCC league, you will have very consistently the top players within the OCC league finishing in spots one to eight and therefore playing in the OCC. So I have a few responses to this. The first is this is not particularly different than how the OCC has worked for years, where the top most motivated and skilled players would be the players who got ranks one to six on ladder and would be regularly appearing in tournaments over and over and over. With the OCC League, this is harder to do 
because rather than playing hundreds and hundreds of games where maybe a dozen or two are against actually competitive players, all of it will be against competitive players. So if you have the same players showing up over and over and over, that means they are the best. And that is going to build engagement. When players see someone who is consistently getting results, they're going to recognize that person as good and people like to cheer for good people. However, if you have somebody who is in the league and is consistently in the middle of the pack, but then breaks it into the top eight, people are going to cheer for them as an underdog. Again, if there's people who come in through the ladder qualifiers and then make it into the top eight, they're going to be cheered for them as an underdog. All of this is just building engagement in a way that it simply does not exist with the current system. And I don't think little player variety is necessarily a fault of the system. I think that's actually a good thing because if you're seeing consistent players, it means that one, the competitive integrity of the tournament is high and the competitive quality of the tournament is high. And two, it allows players and fans of the game to become fans of players. And they're going to tune in more often to watch their favorite players play. Now, the third issue that I've seen brought up is that this could potentially lead to gatekeepers where you have the same 20 or so players in the OCC league and then the same eight or so players who are being relegated and then coming back in. So it's going to create a block of the top 30, top 20, whatever it is, players who are just going to absolutely dominate the OCC and the OCC league and the OCC league qualifiers through ladder. Now, to me, that this is quite an odd issue to take because if it was possible for the same 30 or so players who are just the best at the game to dominate to that extent that consistently, we would be seeing that in OCC. There is no difference between the OCC system and the OCC league system if that is the issue. I think there's enough of variety in player skill level depending on the meta, just depending on the month. There's an, always players who are taking breaks. There's always players who are coming in with new deck ideas, who are coming in motivated to climb. So I think you would actually see very few immediate overlaps between players being relegated and then players coming back in. Because also you have to consider if somebody puts the effort in to make it to the OCC League and then does so poorly that they're immediately relegated, they might not have the motivation to immediately go to make it back into the league. Now, you could say that that's a detriment because you are making players unmotivated to play in tournaments. However, one, I think that they could be back once they feel that they have a better understanding of the meta, better understanding of other players, how to play, all of that. But two, if you think people are going to get unmotivated by the league, you better believe people are unmotivated by the current OCC system. It's just that bad. So the other issue that I see is that this will dissuade new players from trying to join competitive. This is going to dissuade new players from trying to make it into tournaments because rather than seeing, oh, I need to make top 38 on ladder, top 36 on ladder to try to make it into the OCC. Now I need to make top eight and then make it into a league and then I need to do well in the league and then I'll make it into the top eight for the OCC. And all of that is, seems very, very difficult and it will dissuade new players from wanting to join competitive. Now, my response to that is I think there's very few players where they would just stop playing the game or at least stop playing the game competitively because of this. Most players like a challenge. And also, much more importantly, most players who are trying to break into competitive don't want to break into competitive by showing up to one OCC. They might not even be shown on stream. They'll probably lose in the first round because it's a best of three against a tournament veteran. And then they have to restart from scratch and they're not going to do that. Most players don't just want their 30 seconds of fame in the spotlight by making it into a top eight one time. They want to make it into the competitive cycle. They want to make it into tournaments and they want to make money. They want to be able to get accomplishments over and over in cards. And the league system is rewarding for that. It gives you multiple milestones to measure your skill as you grow as a competitive player. First, you want to make it into the league for the first time. You want to make it top eight on ladder. That's something you can work towards. You can see your ladder ranking increasing every month until you finally make the top eight you make it into the league now you'll probably not make top eight in the league immediately you might even get relegated but now you know you can make it into the league so whether a month or two passes or you go back to it immediately you'll eventually make it back into top eight you'll make it back into the league you'll do better maybe for a couple of months you're sitting middle of the pack not being relegated but not making it to the OCC and then finally you make it to the top eight and again I think this is where the money to the end all of the top eight players would be very, very rewarding because a player who does all of that will now finally be able to make it to the top eight 
I think the OCC should be the end goal. If OCC is going to be the flagship tournament, if OCC is going to be the only tournament in cards on a monthly basis, it should be a bigger deal. It should be a far bigger deal than it currently is. And how you do that is with the league system. Now, if you want new players to get into tournaments that they can get into much more immediately, I would say, yes, that's a very good idea. But you need the Open to do that. The OCC has never been the tournament for new players compared to the Open or compared to the other format tournaments. But all of those have been discontinued. So if you are left with the OCC, the best thing you can do is make the OCC League. Now, finally, there is the issue of how you create the League. What do you do for the first month? How do you get these 20 or 30 players? The most obvious solution would just be to have one ranked ladder season where whatever the number of spots in the OCC League would go to that many ranked players on the top of ladder for that month. And the issue with this that has been raised has been that this would create the most important ladder season of all time. And you might have people who are just busy that month. It's kind of unfair to demand everybody play on one specific month to kickstart this OCC League. So an alternative solution to this, which was suggested to me by Thanatron, much of this has been done in dialogue with Thanatron. Huge thanks to him for all of his ideas and feedback. And his idea... And his idea was to do an open qualifier. Now, it doesn't need to be an open qualifier with a tournament immediately at the end, like the cards opens were, but you have the Swiss round open qualifier where anybody can join, anybody can register, anybody can show up with their decks. They play multiple rounds of Swiss, and then at the end, you take the top ranked players from that Swiss round to join the league. Because the Swiss round is going to relatively reflect the league, so it's going to give an idea of who is going to be able to best perform against increasingly high-quality opponents, and those players should be the ones who make up the league. Now, because of the system of relegation and qualification, you'll have the players who don't make it in through this qualifier being able to immediately join in the following month by playing on ladder. All of this works together to create a system that is far more engaging for the players, far more engaging for the viewers, and just as easy to run for 1939 and 983. Now again, is this system flawless? Absolutely not. No system is ever flawless. But is this miles better than what we have now? Absolutely yes. But again, this has been entirely me talking. I don't want to be the only one talking. I shouldn't be the only one talking. Because the problem is 1939 is the only ones talking, and they don't listen to anyone else. I don't want to pretend to be the voice of the people without hearing feedback. So I'm asking for everybody to give their feedback. Whether you are a viewer of cards tournaments, whether you want to be a viewer of cards tournaments, but currently aren't because you just don't like the system, please give me your feedback here. Please give the feedback in the cards discord because this feedback isn't just for me. This feedback is for 1939 because 1939 needs to listen and they need to hear these different solutions. They need to hear the problems players have and they need to be the ones who actually implement a solution. Now I'm not saying that they need to implement this at all. I think it would be very awesome, and I hope you think it would be awesome too. But again, they do not need to implement this. They just need to do something. Because at the moment, Cards Esports is dying. The number of competitive players, the tournament regulars from the last two or three years, who are taking breaks, extended breaks, who are just quitting the game, is increasing every month. And this is a huge issue. As somebody who has been around Cards Esports from the very beginning, I don't want to see it die. I want to continue playing. I want to continue casting. I want to continue enjoying to watch the game. And I think it is possible with the OCC League. But let me know what you think. Let 1939 know what you think. But that is enough of me talking. Thank you very much for watching this video, for spending the time to listen to what I have to say, and hopefully for spending the time to go out and give your feedback. I cannot understate that enough. Please give your feedback. And with that, goodbye.